This is the third video for Word Module 1 in the Shelley and Cashman book. We are on the middle of page 134, selecting a paragraph. So this paragraph up here at the top is the one that we want to select. The instructions tell you to triple click, but that's not correct. If you move the mouse over to the left margin, so it's outside the text area, the mouse cursor will turn into a white arrow pointing to about 1 o'clock. If you click once, it'll select the entire line. Okay, I'm going to click off of that, and I'm going to go back to the margin again. I'm going to double click, and that'll select the entire paragraph. This is a short paragraph, but it'll select everything up to and including the paragraph mark that ends that particular paragraph. Now, here's what happens if you triple click over here. So I'm going to click off of this, and I'm going to triple click, one, two, three. And that's the way to select the entire document. That's not what we want to do. So disregard that instruction and just double click here and we'll select the first paragraph. Now let's move to the top of page 1-35. With the paragraph selected, we want to select the font color arrow to display the font color gallery. Well, this is all of our font stuff in this group from this bar over to here, and this one right here is the font color. The one he wants us to select is the ninth color in the fifth row. There's 10 columns here, so this is the ninth one over, and we want to go down to the fifth row which is right here. Okay, now click off of that, and we can see we've changed the color of the text. That takes care of page 1-35. Now we're going to change the font size of our selected text. I need to reselect it. Another way to do it also is if you just want to select a specific number of lines, you can just go here and click and drag uh, until you select all the lines that you want. So now at the top of page 1-36, we want to click the font size arrow, and the font size is right up here. Again, we're in the font group. And the font size that we want is 22. So we've got some presets in here. If the number that you want isn't there, you can just go up here and type on top of it, which is what I'm going to do right now, and hit Enter, and the text will now be 22 points. Click anywhere in the document to remove the selection, so we'll just click down here by the word how. Now we're going to change the zoom percentage. We want to be able to see more of our document, so we need to zoom out a little bit. And that's where the zoom slider comes into effect down here in the lower right-hand corner. Right now we're zoomed to 220%, so everything is pretty big. We want to zoom out to 120%, so I'm going to have to click on this 10 times. And if I click on it 10 times, you get down to 120%. I can't see the whole page, but I can see all the text that we've typed in so far. And that's all that really matters. So what we want to do is select a bunch of lines now. We're on the top of page 1-37. We want to select all the lines from the word how down to, but not including, the last line in our document. So just click the mouse and drag through the paragraphs that you want. As long as they're all adjacent, you can just click and drag through as many as you need. So now let's turn over to page 1-38. We want to change the font size of the text that we've selected. We've got it all selected here. If we go up and go to our font size button up here, we want to change the font size to 20. And then again, click any place else to remove the selection. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to number the paragraphs between the word how and the word when. So let's click on these and select them all. Now that they're all selected, what we want to do is we want to number them from 1 to 5. You could type in the numbers, and actually there's a feature in Word that makes it easy for you to do that. But if you've already got them typed in, you don't need to go in and type in the numbers yourself. You can have Word do that for you. So here is our numbering option button up here. This refers to paragraphs because it numbers the entire paragraph. We've got five paragraphs here, so we should get the numbers 1 through 5. So if I click on the down arrow here, you see we can not only do Arabic numbers, we can also do letters of the alphabet, and we can do Roman numerals, and we can do both uppercase and lowercase. And with numbers, we can actually do periods, or we can do parentheses afterwards. We're going to do the ones with periods after. Go ahead and click on that, and this is what we get. The nice thing about doing this is, you know, if you decide later on that you want to insert a new line, I'm just going to hit the enter key at the end of this line, it'll automatically renumber everything for you. Okay, I'm going to hit the backspace key. I'll probably have to hit it twice to undo that. Three times, four times. And now we're back where we were before. Now we're at the top of page 1-40, and the topic here is undoing and redoing an action. 
undo is probably one of the handiest commands available in just about any application. It lets you easily correct a mistake or undo a mistake. And there should be buttons up here on, this is called the Quick Access Toolbar. And so you put things up here that you'd want quick access to. By default, we have Auto Save and we have um, Save. And that's it. And then we've got the title of the document over here. Now, normally we see an Undo option up here and a Redo option up here, but those are not visible, so that's fine. I'll show you how to make them visible if they're not visible on your computer either. Click on the down arrow and choose undo and it'll add undo to it click on this button again to customize and click redo and that'll have an arrow going in a clockwise direction and if you pause the mouse over these buttons it'll tell you that the keyboard shortcut for undo is Control z and the keyboard shortcut for redo is Control y so you don't always have to go up here if you memorize those keyboard shortcuts and Control z is one of the most useful ones to memorize uh, you don't need to go up there but that's what he refers to in the book on page 1-40 so if we're going to actually try it we're going to click on undo here it should undo the typing that i did i'll do one more Okay, so now we're back to before we had the numbering in, but if I go too far, I can redo, clicking on the redo button, and now I've got the numbers 1 through 5 back in there the way it should be. So now we're at the bottom of page 1-40. We want to bullet a list of paragraphs instead of numbering them. The ones that we want to bullet, I need to scroll down a little bit here, are these items after the word when. So get in the margin again get your white arrow pointed at one o'clock and click and drag to select all five of those paragraphs and the bullets button is up here and if we click on the down arrow next to it uh, we get a bunch of options here your options may not be exactly the same here but uh, the plain black dot is probably there go ahead and click on that and it'll put the bullet symbols in and notice you've got some other choices here for bullet symbols if you want. And when you pause the mouse over, it'll do a live preview. And you can also define a new bullet if you want to, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So I'm just going to click off of this, and we've got our bulleted list for the items underneath the word when. Okay, now we're over on page 1-42, and he talks about auto formatting as you type. And you can read that over. I've got another video on auto format, but we'll skip over that in this video. Now we're at the bottom of page 1-42. What we want to do is we want to remove a hyperlink. Notice that when we type this in down here, it automatically converted it into a hyperlink for us. And if we don't want that to be a hyperlink, we can right-click on it. I'm at the top of page 1-43 now. And choose Remove Hyperlink from the pop-up list. Now we're at the bottom of page 1-43. To center another paragraph, click somewhere in the paragraph to be centered. We do the bottom line here. Click the center button up here. So these are my alignment buttons in the paragraph group. Click on center and it will center that text between the margins. Okay, now we're on page 1-43. We're going to use the mini toolbar to do some formatting. So we want to move the pointer to the left of the line to be selected. So that's right here. And move into the margin so it turns into a white arrow pointing to 1 o'clock. Click to select the line, and this is the mini toolbar. The mini toolbar pops up. And what we want to do is we want to change the font size to 18 for this. The mini toolbar is still there. Uh, I'm on item number four now at the bottom of page 1-44. With the text still selected, the mini toolbar is still displayed. Click the font color arrow, and we want the ninth color, the fifth row. So here's our font color. And it is, I think that is the one we had selected before, but just to make sure, we'll go to, now we're at the top of page 1-45. We want to go to uh, any place in the document and click to deselect that bottom line. Now we're looking at selecting a group of words. So we want to position the pointer immediately to the left of the first character of the text to be selected. And we want to go to the left of additional here. And we want to drag the pointer through the last character to be selected, which would be the S in the word, tips. 
So in that text selector, we're going to go to our underline button, and that is in the font formatting group up here. He just says to click on the button, so we'll click on the button, and we get a single underline. There are a bunch of options, so if you click on the down arrow, there are a bunch of other options for different types of underlines that you can have if you want. And you can also change the underlying color if you want as well. You can try that on your own. Okay, let's deselect our text by clicking someplace in the document. What we're going to do next is we are going to take the word prevent here and we want to emphasize that. So we're going to make it italic. So to select a single word, just double click on the word and I want to make it italics. We can either go here and click on italics or we can go up here. And if I move the mouse, I lose that mini toolbar. So I'm going to have to go up here now and do italics. You can also do control I to turn italics on. Okay, that takes us to the bottom of page 1-46, and we're going to stop right here now, and we will continue with our fourth video at the top of page 1-47.